Hey, what's going on? What am I doing? Nani? Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. You guys already know what this video is going to be about just by the title of the video. But yes, we are installing a fat 4 inch front mount ETS intercooler onto the WRX today. So the majority of people with boosted cars already know that the summertime is probably the worst times for our performance because you guys already know cold air equals more dense which means more power. More power? And with it being 95 degrees consistently, all of that hot air is making my coolant really really hot. It's hitting above 220 degrees Fahrenheit and that's not really good at all. So with this 90 degree heat, it's just that my little dinky intercooler can't even handle all of the heat right now. What's going to be my favorite thing about putting this intercooler together is going to be the piping we're going to put with it. Shout out to my dad Brent for this super hot boy piping. Man, just freaking, ah, uh, it's hot. Alright, but anyways, that's enough of me talking. Let's get started with the install. To get started, I'm going to remove the engine cover and I'm going to start working on taking off the top mount intercooler first. There are these two pop clips that usually hold them in place, but honestly, mine just kind of just comes off. So we're going to move to the driver's side of the intercooler and first thing we're going to do is we're going to pop off this bracket that is going to be holding in the intercooler. And once we get those bolts removed, we can go ahead and just remove this bracket. Place the bolts back in here just in case I needed them. You guys don't have to if you don't want. We're gonna have these two clamps that we're gonna have to move on each side of the intercooler. We can either do this with an eight millimeter, I believe, or we can just do this with a flathead. Oh boy, this thing is naked up on top here. We're gonna go from this dinky little thing to this. Wow. Let's just take a comparison of how these two intercoolers look right next to each other. Wow. This is like your girlfriend telling you the dude not to tell you to worry about, and that, that's you. I already went ahead on the driver side, intercooler side, there was this, uh, I don't even know what I call this, like an inlet. So it was already stuck behind here and there was no way I could get it on camera to show you guys, but it's just another clamp on here that you can loosen with the eight mil or a flathead and then you can just pry this off. Oh, and uh, this thing down here now, this bracket, you, you don't need this no more. So after we get all of that cleared out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and start working on taking the bumper off. There are gonna be bolts and clips holding it up on top, and you're gonna have some clips and bolts holding it on the bottom as well. So when pulling your bumper off, you always wanna pull the bumper out towards you, and you always wanna be mindful of these clips because these can easily break. Alright, so after we get the bumper removed, we're going to work on going straight to the crash beam and there's going to be four bolts on each side and this is the first hunk of metal we're going to have to remove. There's literally so much work to do. So after you get that crash beam off, we're gonna start working with getting the front mount intercooler at least mounted to the front right now. So an update, I just got the front mount intercooler on. For you 2018 WRX guys, I know they have a facelift and everything, but let me know. Like, these were literally the only kind of bolts I got. And I had to go to the hardware store because those bolts didn't mount up to the OEM bumper bar. I was still able to use the spacers I needed from it. I was just really wondering why I wasn't able to use the supplied hardware that was given to me. 
anyways, it doesn't really matter at this point. I do have the front mount intercooler mounted and I did skip a few steps already. I took off the splash guard and I took off the skid tray. That's gonna lead me to start working under the car and we're gonna remove the OEM charge pipe. To get to the charge pipe, when we go under the vehicle, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to pay attention to the OEM turbo inlet. There are two bolts holding this in and we're gonna have to move this out of the way so we can actually get to the two bolts holding in the OEM charge pipe. I don't know if you guys can see the bypass valve right there. We are going to have to loosen the worm clamp and remove it from the OBM charge pipe. I'm going to work on taking the charge pipe off camera. There really aren't any good angles under the car or over the car to where I can get good camera angles for you guys to see. All right, I just got the bolts removed from the charge pipe and now what we should be able to do, we should just be able to just, uh, just snake this out. Where you can see this hole this is where the charge pipe used to be and just to make things easier on myself i am going to put the parts on it it's going to be this black elbow piece with this gasket that was going to be used to replace it i went ahead and installed the elbow noodle pipe already i didn't put the fitting on it or any of the clamps on yet right now i'm just going around and i'm just trying to piece all of the parts together i put the cob bypass valve on here since this is the new location for it so I'm just trying to piece everything together so I know where everything is going first before I get too ahead of myself. I'm gonna move back to working on the intercooler. Um, what I wanna do next is I want to install the fitting pieces so I can get all of the pipes connected very loosely. You have this one fitting to where one side is slightly larger than the other. This is the only one that's gonna be like it. And we're gonna place it to where the driver's side of the intercooler is going to be. So, so far I got all of the fittings and clamps where I needed them to be. So I also worked down here and got the fitting and clamps down here. So I'm gonna work with the passenger side cause I already have the pipe for the side pre-assembled. So I am going to try and connect these two. So I have this whole piece connected on the passenger side. I am going to start tightening down the clamps except for the bypass valve because I don't know which direction I'm going to have to position this yet. So I don't know if this is like a joke from ETS, but like, this fitting, hose fitting, is way too small to fit onto like literally anything onto the car. Like, I don't know if this is a prank or anything, but all the stores are closed right now. So I'm gonna have to wait till tomorrow to even pick up a new hose fitting. So while that is on pause, I am going to start working onto the driver's side. We did to do the driver's side last because I knew it was gonna be the most painful part. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to remove the washer fluid reservoir. There are a few bolts holding it in. There's one right here, and there's one right here. And there's also one you can't see unless you remove, like, or just push back the fender liner, but it's really hard to catch on camera. And the reason we're doing this is because we need to remove this, uh, I guess, support beam. And the reason why is because it's in the way, and we're not gonna be able to fit the intercooler piping with this in the way. Get the washer fluid moved down the main thing we wanted to do was be able to get access to these bolts so we're going to break these open and then after i get those loose i'm going to move these as well Oh. 
All right, and we're gonna be able to remove the support beam. All right, I got this piece off, but I actually did end up breaking one of my ratchets because of how strong this was. So I went ahead and attached this pipe and this pipe looks so good. But I'm gonna keep everything still loose for now just so I can still finagle everything and get everything fitted right. But yeah, that is just so nice. I'm so in love with this piping. But yeah, guys, the new front mount intercooler is officially on. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I think this thing looks so sick. Also at the end of here, excuse this wiring. I'm gonna clean this up later. We also have the bypass valve just sitting pretty. The Cobb bypass valve though makes some premium whoosh noises. Definitely go check out the video I made on that. But other than that, she is mainly done. But remember guys, you guys do have to trim out the passenger side bezel if you guys want this intercooler to fit. Alright guys, but yeah, I'm pretty much done with the video. I'm going to end the video here, but if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.